When you stop to think about it, your skin is pretty amazing. It warms you and cools you. It covers your entire body, approximately 20 square feet, and is the largest organ of your body. Your skin is your body's protective armor. It's your first defense against the world around you. Like their armor protected knights of old against their enemies, your skin protects you from all sorts of dangerous threats. Chemicals, viruses, heat, cold, sun, the list goes on and on. And even though your skin is very thin, it's surprisingly tough. But despite this apparent toughness, your skin can still be damaged in a number of ways. One of the most frequently reported skin problems, both on and off the job, is dermatitis. Dermatitis is an inflammation of the skin, often resulting from exposure to dirt, oils, strong detergents, chemicals, and other irritants. You won't catch me without my gloves anymore when I'm using any kind of solvent cleaner. I learned my lesson the hard way. The area affected by dermatitis is frequently itchy and swollen. I had this terrible rash on my arm, and I couldn't figure what caused it. I went to the doctor, and she said it was dermatitis probably caused by a chemical I was using to strip some furniture at home. When it comes to dermatitis and most other skin problems, prevention is much easier and far less painful than treating a full-blown problem. And prevention is what this program is all about. You'll find out more about dermatitis and learn six important rules that will help you to prevent skin problems from occurring in the first place. So let's take a look at our first rule. Be aware of all the skin hazards in your work area and minimize contact with them. Think about your work area. What are some of the skin hazards you face? What things could damage your armor? There are many sources of trouble in every work area. For example, watch out for pinch points to prevent painful cuts and bruises. Hey, Bob, did you see that game last night? Yeah, how about that grand slam in the third inning? Oh, She's great. Ow! Hey. Protect yourself against sharp or protruding objects that can cut, puncture, or bruise your skin. Daphne, you're going to cut yourself. You should be using a brush and wearing gloves. Okay, I'll use the brush, but I left my gloves in my locker. This is only going to take a second for me to clean up. Can I just skip the gloves? No. Take the time now to go get them. Okay, you're right. Hazards like these are everywhere, so protect yourself. Another problem you should watch out for is a hazard that's familiar to anyone who's worn a pair of shoes that don't fit properly. Be aware of friction and pressure hazards that can cause abrasions. These hazards are also familiar to people who've raked a lawn without wearing gloves. Calluses and blisters are a painful reminder of what friction and pressure are all about. Although your skin protects your body, it's not as tough as a suit of armor. On and off the job, you have to be on the lookout for these and other potential skin hazards and take steps to prevent them. And look, too, for those hazards from sources which may not be quite as obvious. In other words, be aware of environmental hazards that can cause skin problems. Overexposure to cold temperatures without the proper protection could result in frostbite, a serious skin problem which most commonly affects the toes, fingers, nose, and ears. But cold temperatures aren't the only environmental hazard to be concerned with. There's also the other extreme. Sunburn, sun poisoning, and skin cancer are serious problems that can result from overexposure to the sun. And whenever you're outdoors, also be aware of the danger from certain plants. Poison ivy, oak, and sumac cause allergic reactions in some people. If you're sensitive to poisonous plants, your best defense is to learn how to recognize them so that you can avoid direct contact. Too often, we don't think about environmental skin hazards until we come down with a case of poison ivy or a serious sunburn. But to protect your skin, you've got to recognize the damage these hazards can cause and learn what you can do. Now, that may mean wearing personal protective equipment. And that brings us to our next rule. Wear the appropriate personal protective equipment. PPE to protect yourself from skin hazards. Different types of PPE can be used to protect your skin depending upon your activity and the hazard you face. Use common sense and follow your company's guidelines when determining the appropriate PPE to use. I'm out in the sun most of the time, so for me, PPE includes sunscreen, 
a hat, sunglasses, and a light, long sleeve shirt. I never used to bother with gloves for simple jobs like this, but I learned my lesson the hard way. Last year, a splinter got under my skin and got infected. I couldn't believe such a small cut could cause so much pain. So you won't catch me not wearing gloves. Not wearing PPE when you work with chemicals is just plain stupid. Just a drop or two of some of these chemicals can cause a serious burn. Know when personal protective equipment is needed. Use it and use it properly. That's especially true when you're dealing with chemicals. And that brings us to our next rule. Handle chemicals with care. It's hard to imagine getting through a day without coming into contact with chemicals. They're in cleaning agents, lubricants, and all sorts of other materials. And even though they may look clear like water or have little smell, many of them can irritate or even severely burn unprotected skin. So take the proper precautions when working with any type of chemical. Hey, Bob, the boss said to give you a hand cleaning that stuff up. Great. I could use the help. I'll go get my gloves. Ah, don't bother. This degreaser won't hurt you. I use it all the time. Well, I don't want to take any chances. I'll be right back with my gloves. Hey, Bob, I heard you were reassigned to working in here. What's the story? Well, I sure wish I'd listened to you about those gloves. The doctor says I've got dermatitis from that degreaser I was using. But I thought you said it didn't bother you. It's something called uh, sensitization. Oh, I've heard of that. Isn't that when you're exposed to something for a while with no problems, then one day you get an allergic reaction? Mm, yeah, that's exactly what happened. I sure learned my lesson the hard way. Well, I sure hope it gets better soon. Thanks. Don't learn your lesson the hard way. When working with any chemical, take steps to protect your personal suit of armor. Read labels check material safety data sheets, or ask your supervisor what safety precautions to take. So take care of yourself and your work area and prevent many of the common hazards that can cause skin problems. In other words, follow housekeeping procedures and practice good personal hygiene. One of the simplest and most effective ways to avoid dermatitis and other skin problems is to make sure that your skin, work area, PPE, and clothing are kept clean and in good condition. For example, work areas that are covered with machine cuttings, chips, splinters, dirt, dust, or spilled chemicals are accidents waiting to happen. I wonder if Joe's got a screwdriver around here. Oh, what a mess this place is. Ow! Well, who left this here? Joe's messy work area covered up a serious skin hazard for his co-worker. Take a look around your work area. Are tools put away? Are spills cleaned up? Is it relatively free of dust and dirt? Are machines clean? Taking care of hazards like these is what good housekeeping is all about. But it's not just your work area that you have to keep clean. Protecting your skin also involves practicing good personal hygiene. And that means keeping your clothes, your skin, and your PPE clean. I always wash my hands before I take a break or leave for the day. And then I use a moisturizer to prevent my hands from drying out. This worker is smart to take preventive measures to protect her skin. But understanding the importance of preventive measures isn't enough. You also have to know how to treat any skin problem whether it's a rash, puncture wound, or burn. And that's what our final rule is all about. Get medical attention for any skin problem and know first aid procedures for skin injury. When accidents of any type happen, quick, correct action is important. Ow! Hot! Hey, are you all right? Yeah, I think so, but there's something wrong with that machine. Look, I'll report it. But you go put some cold water on that burn. It could be serious. Have it checked out. Nah, I don't want to bother. When an accident occurs, no matter how minor you may think it is, don't take it lightly. Stephanie ignored her burn. Let's see what happened. I didn't think that burn was anything to worry about. But I was wrong. It became painfully infected, and I ended up in the emergency room a few days later with what the doctor called a deep tissue infection. Well, if I only taken care of it when it happened, 
I would have saved myself a lot of pain and aggravation. Ignoring any type of skin problem, whether big or small, is a mistake. Don't brush off seemingly minor skin problems. Cuts, scrapes, rashes, or bruises can become major skin problems if they're left untreated. They can even be life-threatening. Of course, prevention is always the best cure. To prevent problems, take skin safety seriously and follow the six rules you've learned today. Let's review them now. Be aware of all the skin hazards in your work area and minimize contact with them. Be aware of environmental hazards that can cause skin problems. Wear the appropriate personal protective equipment. Handle chemicals with care. Follow housekeeping procedures and practice good personal hygiene. Get medical attention for any skin problem and know first aid procedures for skin injuries. Remember, it's up to you to take care of your suit of armor. Nobody else can do it for you. Play it safe and smart and avoid pain, discomfort, and time out of work. Pay attention to any specific rules for your job to protect your skin. Whenever you're unsure what to do, ask your supervisor. And whether it's at work or at home, be sure to follow the six rules for skin safety we showed you today.